name's Anna. Um, I'm, from, I'm from Elsevier, and Mendeley is now part of Elsevier. Um, um, so I'm going to be talking about how, you, how Elsevier and Mendeley, in the changing research landscape, um, can help you to make an impact, know your impact, and show your impact. So, um, so yeah, a sort of very um, obvious core thread of, of all the talks and discussions today is that um, everything's changing in research, everything's changing for researchers, and all the participants in research, including traditional publishers like Elsevier, um, they're also changing in these changing times. So there's increasing pressure and challenges for researchers. Um, a sort of, you know, kind of maybe flippant way of, of looking at it is that it's never been easier to get your work out. So with all the new technology and tools and media and platforms that we've been hearing about, my head kind of hurts a bit from hearing all about the, the new stuff. Um, um, so it's never been easier to get your work out. Um, and yet somehow it's never been harder to get your work seen, is somehow how it feels. Um, so there's more researchers than ever, producing more outputs than ever. There's a lot of competition. So how do you ensure that you and your work make an impact? It's not an easy problem. All of these options are opportunities for you um, to reach new and wider audiences. Um, uh, but options also sometimes mean choices. Um, so what do you spend your time on? What do you, what do you choose to do? Because, by the way, you are entitled to holidays. Uh, um, so um, I think it's also a sort of um, a clear, clear element in today's talks that traditional, publis traditional publishing is still an important element. It's not enough on its own, but it's still, it's still alive and kicking. It's still something that you're probably going to have to think about and do in your research career. Um, so... Although my bit of um, although my role at Elsevier is, is is really focused on Mendeley, in particular research our profiles and metrics, um, so maybe more fitting in um, this this session this afternoon rather than this one, um, I'm going to take a step back and talk about what Elsevier more broadly does um, for especially early career researchers and um, the role it plays in traditional publishing. Um, so taking a look at some older and newer ways um, that a traditional publisher like Elsevier um, can help you make your research stand out. Um, okay. Publishing Campus is a kind of big one. Um, so Publishing Campus is, no matter what stage you are at your career, um, but especially if you're starting out, um, whether you've um, already got an article that you're ready to publish um, and you're looking for where to publish, or you're really starting out and you don't even know what it means and, you, and you're really trying to build up your skill set, Publishing Campus can quite possibly help you. So there's a whole bunch of free resources there to support you in publishing, um, including online lectures, interactive training courses, and expert advice. So I've just got a snapshot here of, of some of the latest things that have been happening on Publishing Campus. There was a live webinar yesterday, I think, Funding Hacks for Researchers, Online Lecture, 10 Tips for, to, for Writing a Truly Terrible Journal Article. I think the intention is there is that if you know how to write a really bad one, you can not do that and write a really good one. Um, interactive course on how to get published, preparing your manuscript. Um, so there really is a lot in there, um, particular um, sets of training that, that might be useful um, when you're starting out in your career, um, the College of Skills training, um, speaking about things like um, research writing skills, peer review, research funding, ethics, how to get noticed, um, College of Networking, so online and face-to-face -face networking, more professional advice on how to get noticed, um, and lots more. So it, at some point, you're probably going to be thinking, you know, you've got your work and you you want to be publishing, you want to be getting it out there, maybe in a journal. Um, so for all their flaws, metrics can be useful. They're only part of, um, um, part of what you might take into account um, for, for choosing a journal, but there are tools out there that are metrics-based that can help you. Um, so journal metrics um, um, is powered by Scopus, um, uh, um, the citation index. Um, but the golden rules when using metrics um, they're not enough on their own. So use both qualitative and quantitative input in your decisions. You're not going to choose a journal based on one or even several metrics on its own. I mean, talk to the people in your field, talk to your supervisor, talk to the experts and, and, um, and get their take on what journals are out there and what, where might be the best venue for your work. Um, and if you are using metrics, use more than one. Um, one metric will never be the, the full story about a journal. Um, uh, Another Elsevier tool, um, uh, Journal Finder. So this is something if you've already got your manuscript and you're looking for where it might be, the, which journal might be the best fit for you, then you can um, insert your title and abstract, select your research field, and um, Journal Finder will try and match your manuscript with the most appropriate disclaimer Elsevier only journal. So this tool only applies to Elsevier journals, but still is, um, it could be one tool that could help you um, when you're looking for a journal. Um, 
but of course this is all this is all automated so you should always consult the aims and scopes of the journal first and in the end the editor always decides if if your manuscript and um, really is a is a good fit for for the journal um, another element you might want to take into account is um, article enrichments so um, these days in research there, there's a whole range of digital formats and objects that are that are being used in research and um, can go through the entire list, but you know, in your field, there'll be the things that are being used um, in your day-to-day -day research, um, and those things are part of your research story. So they're they're part of what you should be communicating when you're talking about your results, what you've done, and what you've and um, what the outcomes are. So article enrichments are ways to um, um, present those digital formats and objects um, as part of your published um, output, as part of your article. And um, so present your research in more powerful, dynamic, and engaging ways. Um, so in Elsevier journals, we've got sort of three categories of article enrichments. There's data viewers, that's the list of data viewers there. There's also ones to do with context and references. Um, so connecting, connecting um, your research to relevant um, um, external references um, and databases. Um, and ones to do with article presentation and multimedia. So audio slides is about um, um, ma making a set of um, slides and giving a talk, sort of short talk about your um, research that goes hand in hand with the article. So for a, a faster, quicker summary um, of, of, of what your article is about, for people to decide whether they should read it. Um, same idea, there's featured author videos, multimedia for this article, interactive questions. Um, Elsevier, the traditional publisher, also produces some not so traditional journals. So um, uh, one of the so-called mega journals, um, and the mega journal at Elsevier is called Helion, so it covers all disciplines, and they're similar to um, um, similar to F1000. And um, the idea is there, everything everything that's new and technically sound is worth reporting. So report your original technically sound results of primary research, and um, regardless of um, the you know the perceived impact that um, um, the editors might think that it will have at a given time, um, get it published, and you know. Let the let the community decide um, what's really what's really going to have an impact. Um, methods X um, that's a methods journal. So um, yeah, you is depending on your field, you may spend quite some time refining and improving methods um, to get your research done, um, and you should get credit for that. So get credit for the time and effort you put into making methods work by publishing your methods. And um, so it's a journal entirely focused and structured around publishing methods. Um, data and brief, yeah. Um, he, again, a data-focused journal, fully open access, um, where you can describe your data to facilitate redu redu reproducibility, make your data easier to find, use, and cite, and potentially open new doors for collaborations with people who are also interested in that data and have an idea of another thing to use it for. Um, that leads us into data sets on Mendeley. Um, so um, an alternative to publishing a data article um, would just be to um, get the data set stored online where it can be easily shared, accessed, and cited. Um, another way to get credit for the time and effort that you spent preparing that data once you're ready to share it. Um, that leads us into my bit of Mendeley, which is um, how Mendeley can um, help you to know the impact. So once you're published, what's the impact of that publication um, over time? Um, so that's the bit of Mendeley that we call Mendeley Stats. Um, a big part of that is this detailed dashboard. Um, this um, almost an invisible thing at the side is this um, incredibly detailed dashboard um, that Mendeley Stats gives you for each of your publication. Another disclaimer, at the moment this is powered by Scopus data, so um, we can give you this detailed dashboard for every publication that's in, in indexed in Scopus. Um, to show you, yeah, since you couldn't see what was on that picture, I've um, zoomed in on each bit. So here we go, we see your headline metrics for your publication. Citations, still important, although they're not enough on their own. Um, how often your publication has been downloaded from Science Direct if it's um, in an Elsevier journal. Um, how, many, how many Mendeley users um, have that publication of yours stored in their library. Um, performance timeline, so how is my article being um, viewed and cited over time for the last 12 months and going further back in time. Um, which articles have been citing my article recently. Um, what are the other articles that people reading my article are reading? I'll give you some insights and in, uh, um, um, the impact and uh, wh um, where in the research field um, uh, your article is having an impact. Um, where are your viewers coming from? So um, again, this is powered by Science Direct. So if your article is um, indexed on Science Direct, then um, it's been downloaded this many times. But where in the world has it been um, uh, downloaded from? Again, more insights into where you're having an impact. 
and in which search terms have those people um, used to find your article. And then how is my publication being shared on Mendeley and um, by discipline, by academic status? Um, yeah, so that's the detailed view that uh, Mendeley Stats gives you per publication. And then there is also um, the showing your impact side with Mendeley. So uh, we also, Mend Mendeley also gives you um, an overview of the impact of someone on their researcher profile um, in the stats tab. Um, and that's part of a broader profile. To, so what we're trying to do in Mendeley is, um, is make your researcher profile there and um, build as comprehensive as possible a picture of you as a, as a researcher. So again, your publications aren't the end story of you. What, what other contributions have you made? And um, where else have you had an impact? And um, you know, this is the full picture of me as a as a researcher. That's where we aspire to get to, and um, and um, so that your Mendeley profile can then help you to connect with other researchers and connect you with um, better reading recommendations. And um, because of what I've done, because of what I've read, what else should I be reading? Where should I be going next? And um, also to try and connect you with uh, funding and career opportunities and beyond. And um, so, this is the um. This is what we're trying to do to, um, um, to, to, to make Mendeley a tool to, um, to increase your research profile offline and, and to help to make you more efficient as a researcher. Um, and I realize now that the pictures are quite small. So if, oh no, that's a bit bigger. Oh yeah. So I guess you can see here. So this is the overview of the researcher that I was talking about. Um, same idea, but aggregated stats over all your publications. Um, H index citations, readers and views. And um, this also adds um, media mentions. If you're um, impactful enough to have been mentioned in the mainstream media, um, then this powered by news flow um, will show you um, and alert you of the, the mentions of you in the mainstream media. Um, and the picture on the left there is the, the, the rest of the profile with publications, professional experience, education history, um, any editing that you've done in your research interests. So we intend to grow this to, to show the comprehensive picture of you as a researcher and we'd love to hear from you what are the most important things that you'd like to, to see there and um, to, to really complete the picture of you as a researcher. Um, and I think that's my last, oh yeah. So we want to hear from you. Every journal, platform and product um, elsewhere is co-developed um, with ongoing um, input from the research community. So we've got feedback programs for authors, reviewers and editors. We've got innovation explorer, explorers, which is a big panel of people who have said that they'd like to help us with our research. Um, Mendeley advisors, again, and, and a group of people who want to help by giving feedback to Mendeley in particular. We've got customer and user research teams, and product managers want to hear from you. So um, this is my email address if you want to send me feedback um, offline, and um, there's my Mendeley profile. And everything that I've been speaking about um, is pointed to in my slides, which we'll be sharing later. So, um, so I, hope this, I hope this has been a sort of helpful um, whistle-stop tour of some of the many things that are out there that might help you in your, um, in your research career in publishing in particular. And um, I look forward to getting your feedback.